So as Yomu's final duel as herself before she takes on the role as Otis draws closer, we have a more slice of life episode. This sees Yuhi battle with his insecurities and goes on a shopping date with Zanet. Hello everyone and welcome to Dueling with Downton and today we're talking all things episode 125 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush anime series. An episode that felt a bit like a commercial teaching us how to buy packs of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards and telling us that it really doesn't matter what you wear as long as you are comfortable and happy in yourself. Because let's be honest, Yuki's outfit went from, okay cool, to what the hell, that looks ridiculous. So first of all, the Dark Empire have seemingly ditched Gohar Juna now that they have Monster Reborn, a move that I think will prove to bite them in the butt. As again, Yuna is extremely prideful. And that statement where Yumu stated, we don't need you to be my final opponent, is an emotional damaging statement to someone like Yuna, who could possibly now be left feeling unwanted and used, which can create resentment and hatred. So I don't think that we've seen the last of this Goha. So on the topic of Yumu's last duel, I thought it was really sweet how she wanted it to be Yuhi, the person that she's going to miss the most, and who will be the most affected by her erasing her own memories, or yourself from existence, so everyone else will remember her. So her last passing gift that she wants to do is to give Yuhi that final farewell duel. And yeah, this is very sweet and wholesome. Yes, it was a misunderstanding, but with Yumu thinking that Yuhi needed more time to mentally prepare for his sister to no longer be around anymore was a sweet display of emotional awareness and understanding. And it does show maturity, something the other dark men, Zuijo included, seem to have missed out on as we're heading over to the pack buying segment, which was just pure gold. Now this did feel heavily like a marketing strategy in order to boost sales for the in real life card game. But it was a wholesome and funny segment to watch. But real quick, what was Suijo's plan here if Yuhi never showed up? Suijo had no money. How was he going to show this process without money to Sayaba? Rushed all the store owner? Hmm. Wait, I can definitely see that happening. I can see Dewijo going into the shop, wanting to buy a pack of cards, the owner saying, you need to buy this with money, and him going, rush to me. If I win, you give me this pack of cards. If I lose, I leave without it. We often see Dewijo acting very seriously and stoic. That we often forget that he can bring the comedy and his goofy methods here were light-hearted and funny. Doing the summoning chant to chew the pack was, again, a good laugh. A great joke with him returning the pack when Yuki said he's not buying him one. That had that awkward sort of laugh that came out. Him saying that if you open them too quickly, you will die was crazy, but it teaches patience and for kids to be careful of their surroundings. So on this point, we learned that M-Chan was the store employee. Yet in the flashback, we see her riding a steamroller that almost flattens Zuijo. So are there multiple copies of this character? That would explain a lot. Zuijo really seems comfortable within this episode, acting like a guide to the Dark Men, helping them learn and grow, gaining new experiences. It was odd, but nice seeing him in this way. And we do often forget that he is a respected and trusted leader of the um, Vulgarian Empire. So seeing the him being like this with the Dark Matter Empire kind of reflects what we used to know about the character. So Net and Yuki's relationship in this episode was great. And I like seeing how these two characters were bonding and have been bouncing off of each other over the past few episodes. And obviously, Zanette doesn't know what a date really is, otherwise she would have melted down. Otherwise, she would have gone into meltdown mode with her emotions, 
but we are continuing this supportive relationship between the two, even if sometimes playful. And yes, you could tell that Zanette was having fun and teasing Yuhi about the clothing choices he was making and about his previous methods of getting someone else to choose them for him. Finally, respecting him at the end for making his own choice by picking out that god-awful joint Rex outfit that he's wearing. But yeah, Yuhi, as far as females go in Go Rush, you can't really go wrong with Zanette. Wait, maybe you can. I think she's only a month or so old. So you have to wait, otherwise M.I.K. will be knocking at your door. Now a show of hands of how many people, like me, got my phone out and tried to scan that QR code that was on the basketball, only for it to fail, leaving you feeling like a complete idiot. Well, go rush, you missed a perfect opportunity to hide a little secret or easter egg within that QR code. Overall, an odd calm before the storm type of episode that gave me a lot of Zanette screen time, so I'm happy, and it kept me suspicious about Yuna and what her involvement could be moving forward. It was a good laugh, so I enjoyed the episode overall. Nevertheless though, things are gonna get real as we dive in to what seems like the climatic timing of the season. Will it end up being Yuhi versus Yuumu again, or will Yudia step up and face the Dark Meister himself? Overall, I can't wait to see what happens. I actually haven't seen these last two episodes yet as of recording all of these other reviews. So I'm going into these episodes blind still. So let me know your thoughts on this particular episode and the episodes before this, but please do not spoil anything for me moving forward. Much appreciated. Have a great day. Aligator, Martinet, goodbye.